as much as you can. Can you talk about what happened on the overtime touchdown? Sean, talk about it as a rubber out, but it also appeared you might have had a coverage mistake because you had both quarters in the same spot when the pass was completed. Yeah, it, uh, sounds exactly right. It was a, a pick route designed for man, and, uh, you know, we ended up dropping the coverage. We, we, we had people on people, and uh, the whole design is to call someone to – uh, lose their coverage, and that's what happened to us. I mean, they they executed better than we did in that situation. And then the other thing I want to ask you, and, and this is, you know, you'd speak of this as a defensive coordinator, but as a guy who's also been a head coach, who's been around this league for a while, there's a lot of talk afterward about your team finding something in the second half, something to build on. And McDermott, Sean said also that, you know, it's it's also just one game. How do you, what gives you confidence that what the, your team did in the second half is more something that can be built upon long-term as opposed to an individual group of adjustments or game plan in a particular game against a particular opponent? Well, you know, going to the game, I, I really felt like we were unified as a team and uh, I don't feel any different coming out of that game. And the way we rallied uh, was what in my mind I thought we would do. Our, we got a, a group of guys that fight and battle every week. Uh, it's, 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 I was not surprised at the way our guys came out and stuck together uh, in that second half. It just, we've got too many good players who have had success and have a lot of pride about what they do. Uh, so when we were in at halftime, I, you know, I, the attitude was what I expected, um, that they were going to come out and fight and not concede. And a great indication was right before the half, we had a, a, a turnover, our defense had to go on the field and defend a short field. And they went, our defense uh, forced a three and out. And it was just like, that's the way it has to be. As difficult as things had been, they still had that fight and that pride and that, that carried over into the second half. But I think that's our team. And so I don't know if I'm answering your question. I just, uh, I'm not surprised that our guys as a team, we battled the way we did and I don't expect anything different every time we walk on the field uh, from our, our team. You know, I think it was, it was two different halves, you know, is what you look at, at least from the outside. And all those things that you talk about were there in the second half and not in the first half. And going forward now, obviously the goal is to keep playing that second half as much as possible. So how do you believe in that? And I know, you, you know, as a team, you do believe in yourselves, but, you know, what about that second half makes you feel like that that could be repeated as opposed to maybe what went wrong in the first half? Um, I just, I just see it where they got off to a good start in the first half and we had to make some adjustments, but it happens in ball games where you have to make adjustments along the way. I, I know it seems that way on the, on the scoreboard that it was a tale of two different halves, but you know, you're making adjustments all along and trying to figure out ways to get back in the game. And I think our attitude and approach coming into the, into the game was right. We just needed to make some adjustments uh, to what we were doing. And once we did, we played better. All right, Leslie, I appreciate it. I know the question's a little esoteric, so thanks for your time. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, over the last couple of weeks, you guys haven't been taking the ball away at the rate that you have uh, in the first half of the season. So how do you think you guys can get back to that way of taking away the football multiple times a game? Yeah, that's a good question, Maddie. And that's something that we have uh, talked about as a staff earlier today. And uh, we need to get back to taking it away. Uh, it would have made a big difference yesterday. And we got to find ways to get it done. You know, we'll continue to, to work on it in practice. We'll continue to talk about it. And as you know, sometimes they come in bunches. And once you get a couple or get one, they kind of snowball from there. So we're hoping that this coming weekend, you know, we can get back on track with taking the football away. And, uh, this, this could be the weekend to get us started. The Matt Rule said that he's planning to use Cam Newton and P.J. Walker. So what do you know about both quarterbacks? I know it's probably a, a little too early to say a lot on both those guys as you guys are, you know, turning the page today to Carolina to talk. But uh, what do you know about both those quarterbacks uh, at right, right now, I guess, Monday, late afternoon? Yeah, I don't know much about uh, P.J., but, of course, having – to defend Cam last season in New England. We have familiarity with him. Uh, I'm not sure if the system's the same. Got to dig into the tape a little bit, see how different the system in Carolina is compared to what they had in New England when he was there. Uh, but you know, Cam has always been a big time player in our league. Uh, 
the ability to run the football as well as throw it, you know, poses a, a, a dual threat for any defense. And just got to be able to watch some tape and get a feel for how they're using them there and become more familiar with, with PJ as well. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the defensive line. How would you categorize the success rate of uh, impacting the opposing passer, particularly when you're rushing with four, uh, four only and not blitzing? You mean in general or are you being specific about a time or? I'm talking in general. I, I mean, I know sacks are not the uh, only statistic that is used to measure that, you know, pressure rate, that kind of thing. Where do you feel like you guys are in terms of doing that successfully, uh, when, particularly when you rush for? Yeah, I think our disruption has been fairly good. I have to dig into the statistics a little bit. We're not hurrying or hitting the quarterback as often, Jay, with our four as we would like. There have been some, some games on occasion where we were really good at disrupting the quarterback with, with our four rushes, four primary rushes. Uh, but not on a consistent basis, not, not as consistent as we would like. And so we're still uh, trying to get it uh, to where it's more consistent. And uh, we, we like being able to rush with four. It helps our coverage. It helps everything we're trying to do on defense. Uh, we just need to get a little bit more on a consistent basis than what we've been getting. And uh, our guys have done a good job all season long. We just want it to be a little bit more, more consistent than what we've had. You, you kind of touched on it there. My next question was, when you're not getting home with four as consistently as you like, what changes for the defense and what challenges does that present? Because obviously you've got to change the way you're doing things to, to get that pressure. Exactly right. And uh, yesterday was an example of that in the second half. You know, we brought a little more pressure. We didn't feel like we were consistently making the quarterback um, – speed up a little bit. And so we had to bring a little bit more pressure and Matt Milano and uh, some of our other blitzers end up doing a good job of, of affecting him at times. And the problem it presents, depending on what type of pressure you're bringing, it can leave your secondary in a lot of one-on-ones and, you know, it's more, it, it's more like risk reward. Uh, so ideally, if you can rush it forward, I think every coordinator in the National Football League would tell you that would be the ideal way. But as you mentioned, if that's not getting you the results you want, then you got to find another way to do it. And that's, that usually means bringing five or six. Uh, and the peril of that is somebody's in one-on-one -on -one situations and somebody has to win. Thanks, Leslie. I appreciate your insight. You're welcome. That's all we have for today. Thanks, Leslie. Okay. See you.